gives me great honor and privilege to introduce to some and present to others Jack Buer possesses a unique combination of expertise in the fields of global economic development, sports, finance through the roles as successful entrepreneur, media personality, film producer, and humanitarian. Since 2002, Jack Buer has also been regularly involved with the production of television, digital media, radio broadcasts. Buer has been nationally published hundreds of times and serves as a regular commentator, commentator for many major media networks, including CNBC, Fox Business, Yahoo Finance, Fox News, CNN, and the American City Business Journals, where he provides his expert analysis and opinion on a range of topics from finance to sports, education, and politics. In addition to his international business endeavors, Jack Buer is also a passionate humanitarian who has been dedicated to fulfilling his mission of empowering from within. Since his childhood, including over two decades of advocacy work in the United States focused on undeserved African American youth. He is the founder and executive director of the Jack Bureau Foundation, a 501c3 which since 2006 has been using its various programs and global initiatives to offer educational opportunities and economic development to underprivileged individuals around the world using sports as a catalyst. Jack Bureau Foundation currently supports programs in Africa, the Caribbean, Central America, India, China, and the United States. Jack Bureau Foundation has delivered over 70 million in medical aid supports to, and supports over 35 orphan care centers and has helped sports equipment to over 1 million undeserved children and helps bring medical care to cover over 10,000 women and children around the world. Mr. Jack Buer, three-time National Football League team captain for the Minnesota, Vi Minnesota Vikings, Philadelphia Eagles, and the New York Giants. But more importantly, he is an ordained man of God. And not only that, he's a friend and a brother to me. He truly cares about helping children. Many times when Jack Buell fly in from somewhere, he's always on the road. When he land, he'll call me. He say, Doc, you, you there? You at the school? And he would leave the airport and drive directly to our school to mentor our young people. He's also instrumental in funding my very first parenting program at Pine Ridge Education Center. I said to them in the beginning of the year that I wanted to start an after-school program, a parenting program for our parents. How many of you know that parents need to be educated on how to I met with my staff and I printed up flyers and I said that we, because they said, well, how are we going to get the parents to come? And I say, food is not working. Spaghetti, they don't want any more of it. We don't want to give computer. We don't know what to do. So I say, we're going to give them money to participate. I created flyers and had a $100 giveaway on the flyers. Did not know where the money was coming from. But tell somebody that's faith. I told my staff, they said, where are we going to get the money? I said, I don't know, because I know I don't have it. I don't have it like Mike Linda, come on, like Montgomery. I don't have it. We print the flyers up, started the program. Still didn't have the money. 
And Mr. Buell walked in, and I was beginning to tell him. He said, how much you need? Look at God. And he funded our very first parenting program. It was a six-week course, and he had a chance to meet them, and it really changed their lives and to help them to be able to better work with their children. So I ask everyone if you stand and join me as I welcome to you and present to some my friend, my brother, Reverend Jack Bure. Come on and give God a praise for him. Can everybody just say glory to God? Glory to his name. Glory to our Father. Oh, please be seated. Please be seated. Glory to God. You know, whenever you put together events, and I got to tell you all, I have been busy over the last four days for this Super Bowl. Huh, I've gotten up at 3 a.m. every day to go on TV. And my days run usually to after midnight. You know, but the Holy Spirit is about the only food you need. Because I woke up this morning, and I got to tell y'all, I had something different planned to speak about. You know, you, you heard um, from Pastor Brown uh, in regards to what we were able to do at the school, when that was Thursday. Um, and so, you know, you look on this side of the room, and you were there with me. I see Senator Bobby Brown, everybody. Bobby Powell, excuse me. State Senator of Florida doing God's work, and I sent him a text message last night. And yesterday, you know, I, I serve as the national spokesman for the police athletic leagues across the country. And, you know, everyone talks about the issues we have in our community as black people, but sometimes we don't talk about how we fix our own problems. Sometimes we try to look out and want everybody else to fix our problem, and everybody else is the problem but we haven't fixed ourselves. And so I was blessed yesterday. I was able to go there and sponsor the reopening of a police athletic league in a community of West Palm Beach that really needs it. But as I rushed out, uh, it was about 2 o'clock, I rushed out. I was trying to catch my 7-year-old son's soccer game. Um, I got a text message. It rings. I, I set my phone, and I have a phone settings for my Google Alert. And one is shootings. Another one is black murders. And it rings. 30 minutes after we opened that police athletic league, a 15-year-old little boy got shot in that same community. And I don't know about y'all, but when I wake up every day, I look at the news because I want to see what's happening to my people. And I get a little bit more upset when I see us killing us than I see one rogue police officer killing us. And so, brother, when you handed me this fan, I grew up in Church of God in Christ. My mama's sitting right there. And so, my message today is culture or Christ? Y'all repeat that after me. Culture or Christ? I choose Christ. Can y'all say it after me? Say, I choose Christ. Say it again. I choose Christ. I choose Christ. Well, I got to tell you, some of our babies, they have no idea who to choose right now. Because our churches are filled up with saints, but our kids are in them streets. And so I wanted to start off with the Bible verse from Isaiah 30. Chapter 9 through 10. 
I don't know if we have it, but y'all can read it with me. Say it with me, folks, please. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophecy deceit. Saints, it's in the Bible. We have a problem. Our culture tells us to tell us what we want to hear. Our culture tells us to mama hand me this cell phone so I can get on YouTube. Our culture tells us it's okay for our kids to listen to hip-hop music that tells us we can call women out of their names. Our culture tells us that we can listen to this music that tells us it's okay if we sell drugs as long as we get out the hood. But we got a culture problem because Christ didn't tell us that. And so when I drove away from that opening of the National Police Athletic League yesterday, I drove away from that community knowing that most of them kids will never be brought into a church like I was from my mama to sit there and hear the word of God. Because if you don't have a foundation, if you don't have a foundation, your house, your spirit will be washed away. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to us to put that foundation back into our children. We can't wait for the world to do it. We can't just wait for Pastor Brown and his associates at the school to do it. We got to start filling our churches back up with these kids. You see, it's not, sometimes just serving in the way that makes you feel good ain't making God feel good. Sometimes God gives you the anointing, the understanding to identify a problem and figure out a solution. Well, I try to figure out solutions. You hear all them accolades, oh, he's been this, he's on TV doing that, he's doing all of this. All that is great, but it don't mean nothing unless I'm bringing souls to the kingdom through Jesus Christ. I can sit with Obama, I can sit with Trump, I can go speak to millions of people. But unless we bring in souls back to the kingdom, nothing else matters. And so if we ain't giving back to our kids, and I want to go now to verse to Ephesians 2, chapter 1 two through 3. Please, saints, read after me, because you know. When we read the word of God, the devil, the devil starts running. And when I walked back up into this, church, this house, I felt like I was at home again. You couldn't tell me I wasn't at Love Chapel Church of God in Christ in Grapevine, Texas. We feel the Holy Spirit in this room. Glory to God. I want everybody stand up and read this verse out loud. You see, it's the Super Bowl, and we're going to all be screaming and yelling for these football teams. But before, let's scream and yell for the Lord. Yes. Glory. And you have, he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, were in time past, ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by the nature the children of wrath, even as others. Woo! Disobedience. Y'all can sit down if you want to, but you can keep standing if you want to, too. Disobedience. 
among whom also we all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh. The flesh or the spirit. What are we going to choose? So when I say culture or Christ, I'm really saying the flesh or the spirit. And so if you don't even know or understand or can't feel the spirit, how are you going to ever learn how to live in it? If we don't bring these babies back into the church house, how are we going to fix fatherlessness, Mike? Hmm? If we don't show the directions, Pastor Swansea, of the, of the church house, how the kids going to know where to dwell? Hmm? You said it. We got to dwell in the spirit. Our babies don't even know how to find the spirit. And these are our babies. These are our future. And it's not up to their mamas and daddies sometimes. What's the Bible tell us to do to the widow, do to the orphaned, and do to the fatherless? See, orphan is not just about somebody that don't got a physical parent. Or well, orphan is somebody that don't got a father in the spirit. See, you're orphan if you don't have a father in the spirit. And so when I say, Senator, Senator Powell, when I say we're going to fix fatherlessness, I'm not talking about fatherlessness in the flesh. I'm talking about fatherlessness in the spirit. And so when I go on TV and I talk about fatherlessness, sometimes people don't know what I'm saying. I had one guy came back at me, they were attacking me on social media because I go sit with the President of the United States to talk to him about fixing the black community. You see, you know what they tell me? They tell me, oh, you're making blacks look, good, look bad for saying that we are fatherlessness and we have a problem. You know what I tell them? I say, when I go to black churches, I don't see the kids in there, right? I looked at a poll the other day. The church participation rate since the time I was 10-year-old to where a 10-year-old is today, 30 years, has dropped over 50%. That's sick. That's sick. As saints, we got to come together. It's our time. It is our time. We must transform this culture through Christ Jesus. I want to go to Matthew 5, verse 13 through 16. Because Christians, we are the key to transforming this culture. And he said, ye are the salt of the earth. Built if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Are we in the house today? Yes. Are we the light today? Yes. You see, a, a wise man, Pastor Swansea, told me, Salt has two significant functions, right? It serves to prevent decay, and it adds flavor, right? Salt prevents decay, and it adds flavor. Well, our, our babies, our culture, our people are decaying right now, and we got to add that flavor. And that flavor is Jesus Christ. We got to be the light. We got to be the light. And so I'm going to end with this verse. Luke chapter 7, verse 22 through 23. And I'm giving y'all these verses. Hopefully y'all wrote them down. If you did not, we'll send them to you. And the reason I say that is because... We don't got to fight this fight with flesh and blood, right? We can fight, fight this fight with the word of God. We can fight this fight in the spirit. We got the weapon. 
we don't have to even look for it. They can fight with guns, right? They can make, you know, the Jay-Z's and the, and the Puff Daddies and the Rick Rosses. God bless them. They can make their money selling destruction to our babies, making their billions selling destruction to our babies. We can fight this fight with the word of God. And so I made a point. If you're looking for something, you're looking for some armor, you want to go fight it, this is the road map right here. Not coming from me or, or Pastor Brown or Pastor Swansea or Senator Powell. This is the word of God. And so Luke chapter 7, verse 22 through 23 says, Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he, whoever shall not be offended in me. You read that last one. Not be offended in me. So people ask me all the time, why everywhere you go do you say glory to God? Glory. To God. I don't care where you are. Sometimes when I walk into a place and I know it could be Muslims, Buddhists, wherever you are, pray to whatever you want to pray to. I pray to Jesus. I pray to Jesus. And so <laughs> the Bible tells me not to be offended. And I'm sorry, but can nobody offend me when it comes to Christ Jesus? And so that armor that I've been able to grasp on, that you have been able to grasp on, we can't just sit in here and preach to ourselves. We can't preach the gospel to ourselves. We got to break out of here. We got to go to these schools. We got to find these babies. So to end this, this is one of my favorite verses. And it comes from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And we all know this verse. We don't hear this. We church people. We hear these verses all the time. Right? But I could have walked up in this church with my eyes closed. Because I had the spirit. When I walked up in here, I had the spirit. I, I almost started shouting. I ain't even gonna, I'm not even going to lie. Pastor Brown, when you start singing that hymn earlier, I almost start shouting. You know, but some of my kids ain't even ever seen shouting. Some of our kids have never witnessed the Holy Spirit. Some of them call us crazy for catching the Holy Spirit. They call us crazy. Right? And so how's a kid going to get to be 15, 16, 17, go off to school, or be in the streets, and be able to go to back to anything if he ain't even never seen the Holy Spirit. Huh? Amen. God is here for us to praise and for us to bring people to the kingdom. And so we got to live by faith and not by sight. Because if we're living by sight, the flesh going to tell us something that we probably don't need to hear, right? If we live in by sight, the flesh is going to tell us, oh, it's okay for him to listen to hip-hop. That's our culture, right? If we live in by flesh, oh, it's okay for her to wear that little skimpy dress, right? It's okay. Times have changed. I know in the Church of God in Christ, if your, if your dress wasn't above your knee, you were doing something wrong. I saw a little girl yesterday in West Palm Beach. She walked up, and I said, baby, come here. I said, baby, come here. I said, how old are you? I'm 15. I said, okay, and you got on fake eyelashes, and you got on all that lipstick. We had a charity event. You done dyed your hair, and you got that little, you know, little slick stuff they do when they put their hair right there trying to look cute. You know they do that, that little slick stuff. I don't know what it's called, but they, it's slick right there. You know what I'm talking about? I said, I looked at her, and I had a plan right then. God put something on my heart. God said, don't come at her right now. 
make, make, her, make her trust and love you first. And so every five minutes, no matter what was going on, I go find her. And I say, hey, so I say something positive to her. Right? And then at the end, I brought her over and I said, baby, listen. I said, I can tell you trust me. She's like, yeah, you're nice. I said, baby, listen to me. Any man that says anything to you other than you shouldn't be wearing all this makeup and you shouldn't be having your fingernails this long at 15 years old, if any man or boy says anything to you other than that, you need to get away from it. And I said, tell me, who you live with? I live with my mama. I said, and where's your daddy at? <laughs> he did something bad to me. And the second I knew why the Holy Spirit had me touch that girl. So I got her mom's number. And I knew she had father wounds when I saw her. Saints. Our neighborhoods. Our schools, our communities are filled with these little girls and these little boys with these wounds. It broke my heart. I got her mom's number, and I will be going to see that little girl. And she may not have a father in the flesh before she met me, but she's going to have a father figure in her life from this day going forward. And no matter if I got to go pick her up sometime on the weekend and bring her around my family and give her some love, or if I got to bring her over here to this church and put her around this church of God and Christ's love, that's what I'm doing. And so I'm just telling you, and if we can, I'll rent a bus on Sundays. Y'all tell me where the kids are. I'll rent the bus. I'll pay for the bus. I'll pay for the bus. And if I can't pay for the bus, I ask my buddy Mike to help me out. And we can, we'll find the bus. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. We can sit in here in the church and we can preach and we can talk about God. But if we don't put solutions and plans on the table, if we don't put action forth, we're not doing nothing. We can't just preach and praise to ourselves. We got to live by faith and not by sight. Everybody say, I choose Christ. I choose Christ. Glory to God, to pastor, to elder, bishop, pastor Swansea, Senator Bobby Powell, Mike, my brother Anthony, all the entire delega uh, delegation. I just got to say I'm so humbled and blessed to be before you. If, if I can inspire you to do anything, it's really live by the word that says we are our brothers and sisters keepers. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. It's not enough to just love and bless your kids. You know, God is real. We just lost Kobe Bryant. Man and done crashed his uh, his helicopter holding his little baby girl. You know, holding his little baby girl. And after that, I saw more men posting on their social medias about their daughters, black men, most of them, holding their daughters than I ever seen before. Right? Sometimes it takes that. Sometimes it takes God taking a great one from us. Right? But right now, we can live in the now. We can call on the blood of Jesus for protection of our babies. We already have the tool. We have the secret. The game plan is set. Now it's up to us to go put it in place. I want to say God bless you all as we walk. Pray for me. I come to you humbly. Pray for me. I will pray for you. Uh, and let's keep giving God the glory.
I'm taking my fan too. 